Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Oliver Velez, inaugural keynote speaker of the first Traders Expo, international best-selling author, world-renowned trader, advisor, and entrepreneur, is back at the show after a seven-year hiatus, representing a rare opportunity to meet one of the most sought-after speakers and teachers on the subject of trading the financial markets for a living. In 1999, Dow Jones dubbed him the Messiah of trading. Oliver, welcome back. Well, nice to have me once again, and welcome, <laughs> traders. I'm so glad to have you all joining me once again, joining the Money Show once again. Um, I hope to have what I consider to be a very dynamic presentation for you here today. And um, uh, I am not here with you today in suit and tie or anything traditional like that. Of course, as many of you know, we are in a very different world, in a world that sort of moved closer to how I want to approach my audience, my following, and uh, every individual who has an interest in trading the markets financially, professionally, in a more casual way. So I'm, I'm with you today in a more casual way, but today I want to talk to you about a very fascinating topic, a topic that um, I've come to be known for as being somewhat of an expert in, and that is uh, day trading. Uh, I've been day trading the markets for the past 30 plus years. Uh, I've been one of the pioneers in, in forming and constructing uh, pretty much the foundation of this industry's day trading industry. And uh, I'd like to talk to you today about 10 steps to instantly improve your day trading. And before I delve into today's topics, uh, into these 10 steps, what I'd like to do is for the benefit of those who have no idea who I am, very briefly, just talk about my history. Guys, I've been trading for the past 38, 38 years. I placed my first trade in 1981. I became a professional on Wall Street on December 6th of 1986. Built um, a reputation on Wall Street that led me to start, to leave Wall Street and start my own independent firm outside of Wall Street. In September of 1994, many people have come to know that firm as Pristine Capital Management or Pristine.com. Uh, over a 12-year period, I grew that entity or that my first company in this industry into an internationally recognized brand. I was also during that time known as the father of swing trading. This is something that you can Google. Just Google Oliver Velez and swing trading. I was the individual who coined the term swing trading for the entire swing trading industry. Um, in 1998, Barron's ranked me, my company, and my work as being the number one source to go through it, go to if you want it, professional style market education and training. This was largely institutional at the time. Dow Jones dubbed me the year later as the Messiah of trading. And uh, I was very honored to be nominated. And I, of course, um, greatly accepted the honor of being selected as the inaugural keynote speaker for this very show all the way back in 1999 and the year 2000. I represented the entire industry as the face of the industry during those two events. Um, I am currently the author of five international best-selling books on the topic of trading the markets for a living. These books are written in five different languages, English, Spanish, um, Japanese, Mandarin, German, and these books collectively sell more copies than almost all books on the topic of trading um, sell collectively. Today, I have over 10,000 individuals students, traders under my tutelage, attempting to become professional traders. And I have one of the largest professional trading firms in the industry. I continue to advise and speak for financial organizations globally. Now, very quickly, um, I'd like to show you, this is a, a, a quick article from my first inaugural speech all the way back in 1999, where I'm dubbed one of the top day traders in the United States. And of course, uh, selected as the keynote speaker of the first International Day Trading Expo. That's all the way back in 1999. This is the article in Barron's uh, that ranked me, my service, my organization as being the number one source to go through if you want to learn how to do this professionally. And of course, this is an image of 
um, my f uh, several of my books, not all five books, but written in various different languages. Now, if anyone has any interest after this speech, after this talk, after this time that I share with you in following or continuing to follow my work, I suggest that you really focus on two places. Number one, my YouTube channel, Oliver Velez Trading. Um, that is my YouTube channel. It is one of the di most dynamic trading YouTube channels on YouTube. Um, I spend a great deal of time every single day making sure that you have a piece of content that will inch you forward towards your ultimate goal of becoming a master market player, whether it's a day trader, investor, swing trader, or any style that suits your fan fancy. I also strongly encourage that you follow me on Instagram, OLVELEZ007, where I also put out daily content specifically for individuals interested in trading the markets full-time and as a professional. Now, let's delve into today's topic. 10 steps to improve your day trading. Now, I am going to make a promise to you. By the end of this presentation, you will have a small but very powerful number of things to do starting right from tomorrow, starting tomorrow, that will have an instant impact on how you approach the, approach the markets. And in reality, whether you are a day trader or an investor, these 10 things will help you, but they are specifically today, as far as today's talk, uh, sort of, they're, they're, they're created more for the individual who's looking to make a daily living in the markets. So without any further ado, let's talk about step number one. Step number one is I believe that the first thing you need to do is set a maximum loss per day. I am astounded after being in this market for 30 years, after being one of the pioneers in the day trading space, I'm astounded how many, at how many people today approach their trading without having a specific number, a set amount of dollars that they will not lose more than on any specific day. This is the first thing you must have as, the, as a foundational element of your overall day trading plan. You have to have an amount that you, you vow that I will not lose more than this amount. This has to be a promise to yourself and it has to form the foundation of all of your actions thereafter. You can't lose money indiscriminately. And if anyone who's a professional in this industry talks to you, the first thing they're gonna tell you is that there are basically two dominant rules to abide by when it comes to actively trading the markets. Rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, refer to lose rule number one. Now, here's the interesting thing. Losing money, losing is, in, is a permanent part of this game. There, there is no way that anyone can eliminate losing. Losing is permanent, but losing the right way has to be the way that you lose. So as far as I'm concerned, a loss is not a loss. Losing is not losing unless you lose more than the amount that you have allowed yourself to lose. This is where step one comes into play. You must set a maximum loss per day. And if you lose that amount or less, you are not a loser. If you lose more than you've bowed to yourself, if you lose more than the amount you've actually written down in your specific trading plan, that is the day you become a loser. So losing at or lower or less than the amount you set in your plan is not being a loser. That is abiding by your plan. We must have this specific amount set and it must be written in stone at least for a while. Now over time, this amount can change, but for periods of time, it is written in stone. Now, how do we arrive at your maximum loss per day? You're gonna have to arrive first at a weekly loss. What's the maximum amount you're gonna allow yourself to lose by a, a, in a full week, five days of trading, Monday through Friday? We're gonna take that weekly amount and we're gonna divide it by five. Now, let me give you an example of how I put my traders 
through my trading program. Each trader of mine starts off with a $50,000 account. I fund all of my traders. They're not allowed to trade their capital for me. They can trade their capital on their own, but I give them my capital. I start every baby trader off with a nominal amount of $50,000 account. Now, with this $50,000, they're given by me a maximum loss per week. If you look at the weekly column here, you'll see that at level one, they're only allowed $600 per week. Now, what I'm suggesting is that every single one of my traders take that $50,000, and let me do this right here, they're gonna take this $600 allowable loss per week and they're gonna divide that by five to come up with their daily allowable loss, okay? Every trader needs a daily allowable loss and you arrive at that by taking your weekly allowable loss, of course, and dividing that by, and dividing that by five. Now, that would bring us to $120 per day. Now, every beginning trader in my program who starts off with $50,000 account with a $600 weekly loss must divide that $600 or should divide that $600 into five, arriving at their maximum daily loss amount. This will ensure that at least they do not exceed the, the ultimate number, the $600 loss. Now, you might be starting with numbers that are less. You might be starting with numbers that are more. It's the concept that I want you to understand. So you're going to take your maximum weekly loss that you consider to be an acceptable loss. This is not supposed to be something that's devastating. It's not supposed to be something that kills you. It's not supposed to be something that makes you want to seek counseling after you've experienced. This is an acceptable loss that you say, okay, I can deal with this. I can bounce back from this. So my traders start off with $600. I want them to divide that by five, arriving at their maximum loss per day of 120. That's step number one. Step number two is we're gonna set a maximum loss per trade. This is unique and different from your maximum loss per week and your maximum loss per day. We don't want to take the maximum loss per day of 120 and blow it on one trade. This is gambling. That's not professional trading. So we're going to take the maximum loss per day, which is 120 in this example, and we're going to divide that by three. I want you giving yourself at least three chances every single day to knock the ball out of the, out of the park, to use a baseball analogy. I don't want you gambling everything that you have today on one single play. That's not professional. That's not smart. That's not intelligent. That's gambling. We don't want gamblers in this game. Give yourself at least three chances. So we're going to take that 120, divide that by three, and we're going to come up with $40. So now in this case, in this baby case, my traders who start the program, they start at the baby level. And if you think $50,000 is not a baby level, you don't understand the real big leagues as far as professional trading is, is concerned. $50,000 is a baby amount, but it's a great training amount. And I start every single one of my traders off with this $50,000 training amount. So we've arrived all the way down with step two of coming up with a $40 maximum trade per loss in this example. Now you again might be starting out with lower numbers or higher numbers, but we're going to stick with my example um, just for the sake of simplicity. So we're now down to $40. Now you approach the markets knowing that I'm not going to lose more than $40 on any given play. And I'm not going to lose more than $120 on any given day. This, these two steps alone set you head and shoulders above the vast majority of novice market participants playing out there because they're not approaching their trading from the loss side first. Every professional approaches their trading from the loss side first. The winning side is the last side to be considered. Remember, the rule number one in this industry, in this game is don't lose money. Rule number two, C, rule number one. It is not about making money. The professional world focuses on losing money properly. So the first two steps 
in the entire process is about focusing on how you lose. We're going to lose responsibly. We're going to you lose professionally. We're not going to lose like a gambler. We're not going to play this like we're going to the casino. We're going to play this like a professional. I've defined my weekly loss. I've defined my, my daily loss. Now I've defined my loss per trade. Now, $40. Let's go to step number three. We need to choose, based on that $40, what's the proper price range? You see, I can't take a small $40 loss and go all the way to Tesla. Tesla's a $450 stock after it's recently split five to one. This $400 price range will destroy a $40 protectional box. I tell my traders to regard their $40 as a $40 cushion, a $40 mattress, a $40 box that they enclose themselves in. And this $40 box is supposed to, to protect, protect them. But a $400 stock will move $40 or will move the equivalent of making you lose $40 with blinding speed. So the way I want you to think about this is imagine that you're trading 100 shares of Tesla. Tesla has to move 40 cents to knock against you to knock you out of the box. How quickly can Tesla move 40 cents in the blink of an eye? This is not your price range for $40. If your price range was $400, maybe. But $40, absolutely not. We have to take that $40 and go down in price to things that don't move that 40 cents per every 100 shares very readily. Now, an AMD, as an example, um, is appropriate. This is a $70 stock or a $40 stock or a $50 stock. We have to take we have to choose our stocks and the range that they trade in based on the number we come up with, with as far as our maximum loss per trade. You have to first arrive at the maximum loss per trade and then choose which stocks actually fit that plan not the reverse like the vast majority of untrained novices do in this game. So let's go on to step four. I'll be revisiting these steps as we go forward. Step four is lose only one bar. Now, if you follow up my work for any period of time, you know that this is something I'm constantly reiterating over and over again. We are technical traders. We trade based off of a chart. Now, I teach my traders to basically enter into certain bars. The bar that they enter into, whether it's a long or a short, is the reason for their trade. Whatever the reason for your trade is, you do not want the market to remove your reason. So if I enter into bar one, my stop, if I buy bar number one, my stop is under bar number one. If I short bar number one, my stop is above bar number one. Why? The bar I enter is the reason for my trade. I do not want the market to remove my reason. Traders, if you do this step four, if you just abide by step four, you will place yourself head and shoulders above the vast majority of traders because this will keep you in the game for a very long time. This will protect you from disaster. This will protect you from financial ruin. If you can limit every single losing trade to your reason, if you can limit every single trade to a maximum of the entry bar, the bar you buy or the bar you short on a chart, you're gonna be in this game forever. And one of the keys to being successful in this game is not being eliminated, not being removed by the market, not being decimated, not being destroyed by lasting. Abide by step four and you will last. Just by lasting, you will outperform 80% of the individuals who are trying their hand at this game because they don't last for a variety of reasons. So step number four is about lasting. 
limiting your loss to one bar. Now, we've already talked about limiting your loss to a maximum of $40. Well, we're now talking about further limiting your loss to one bar, which might be less than the $40. Limiting your loss to one bar might be uh, a loss of $20 in this case, a, a loss of $35, a loss of $15. Now, the other rule, maximum loss per trade, overrides step four. So step two, maximum loss maximum loss per day or step one, maximum loss per trade. That is the overriding maximum loss. Maximum loss or losing only one bar means you're losing less than that. Okay, let's move on. This will become clear. Let's take a look at Square. This is a chart from today's activity in Square, by the way. And what I wanna show you is I wanna show you this bar coming right off the 20 period moving average, which we'll talk about in just a moment here. What if you bought that bar right there, rising off the 20 period moving average, which many of my traders would know is a beautiful buy. That green bar is taking out the high of a former red bar. It's doing it, it's doing so right near the 20 period moving average. If you bought into that bar, you do not want to lose the low of that bar. That's what step four says don't lose the bar more than the bar that you bought. So if I bought this green bar and the stock drops and eliminates the low of that green bar, I'm immediately out. Now, if the low of that bar is greater than my $40 maximum loss per trade, that's not my trade. If the low of that bar is $30 loss, then it is my trade because this play matches my number one rule, which is no loss greater than $40. So these steps become a filter for which trades are yours and which are not. Every trade's not yours, whether it's potentially profitable or not, only the trades that meet these 10 steps. So you need a trade that matches or, or sets up and abides by your maximum loss of $40 per trade. You also need a trade that gives you the ability to do that by adhering to step number four. If I lose bar number one, my entry bar, it must be less than the $40, but I can't lose more than the one bar. If I lose the my one bar and it loses or breaks my first rule of $40, then that play is not mine. So I have to make sure that both of these steps come into play. I can't lose more than $40, but I also can't lose more than one bar. And do these two match? Do these two get me to step number five? That's very key and very critical. So if I buy 100 shares of Square right here, the low of Square looks like it's about maybe 30 cents away, 25 cents away, I'm only gonna lose $25 by losing one bar. This is fine because my maximum loss per trade is $40. If by breaking that bar, I only lose $20, then I might be able to do two lots because two lots, I lose not just $20, I lose $40, but that still makes me or helps me abide by my ultimate loss rule, which is no more than $40. So I want you to understand that these steps work together. You can't abide by one and violate another, all right? Now, let's move on to something like Apple. This is activity from Apple today. Now, for instance, if I took the opposite play, and went short Apple on this bar. Again, my traders will tell you that um, we're gonna mostly enter near the 20 period moving average, which is that blue line you see. Here's the 20 period moving average sloping downward, which I'll get to, a red bar falling below the 20 period moving average. If you entered a short that bar, you do not wanna lose more than one bar based on step number four. We're not gonna lose more than this red bar. If 
that loss is more than $40, then it's not my trade. But if the loss of this one bar is less than $40, it's my trade. If the loss of this one bar is $20 or 15, I can take two lots. If the loss of this one bar is $35, then I can take one lot because one lot allows me not to lose more than one bar, more than the one bar, which is $35, and also helps me abide by the number one loss rule, which is don't lose more than $40 on any given trade. So this play in this case would match. If by losing this one bar, I lose $80, then the play is not mine because it it, it helps me violate the ultimate loss rule, no more than $40. So again, each step must be bypassed. You must get through each step, but each step cannot violate a prior step, all right? Now, let's go to, let's move to the next step, step number five. I want you to trade in the direction of the 20 period moving average. The vast majority of time, your play should be in the direction of the 20. So if the 20 period moving average, this is a simple moving average, by the way. If a 20 period simple moving average on your chart is rising, you're a buyer. If the 20 period moving average is declining, you're a seller. Let's go to square once again. Notice the blue moving average. It is a simple 20 period moving average. The basic angular direction of that moving average is to the upside, which means that we're going to look to buy square, primarily when square crosses above a red bar. I'm going to show you once again the spot that we chose before. All right. We chose square, boom, rising above a red bar near the 20 period moving average. Remember, Let's bring our other rules in. We're trading with the 20 period moving average. We don't want to lose more than one bar. We don't want to lose more than $40 on any given trade. All right, let's keep all of the steps in order. Get through the 10 steps with every trade and your odds of experiencing more winning trades than losing trades rise exponentially, okay? All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna make sure I cover all of these steps for you. Now, if we take a look at Citibank, all right, recent activity, I don't think it's from today, I think it's from yesterday based on, um, <clears throat> at the moment I'm giving you this presentation live here. Notice that the 20 per moving average, the blue line is largely trending downward. We wanna bet to the downside, largely when a red bar crosses below a green bar. So listen, a red bar crosses below a green bar. All right, a red bar. All right, if I can, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> what is this? All right, five minutes left. Her. A red bar, all right, crosses below. Let me get my pen up here. Ah, a red bar crosses below a green bar, but we want to bet to the downside, not the upside. We want to bet to the downside. Your odds of better plays. Listen, a red bar crosses below a green bar. We want to bet to the downside. Why? That blue 20 period moving average is declining. We want to bet in the direction of the 20 period moving average. What's the next step? Step number six, enter your trades near the 20 period moving average. So not only play in the direction of the 20, I want your plays to be near the 20 period moving average. Here we go to squares example once again, traders. And look, here is green surpassing a red bar near the 20 period moving average. Remember, we're gonna enter the bar that clears a red bar near the 20, all right? We do not wanna lose more than one bar we want to make sure we also don't lose more than $40 when it comes to this example. And there's the move to the upside. This is what we want to do to make sure that all 10 steps are abided by for our trades. Step number six here, QCOM. We want to make sure that we're playing near a green bar, takes out red, 
near, it doesn't have to be touching the 20, but near the 20, we want to enter this bar. We want to not lose more than that bar. Don't lose more than your entry bar. Don't lose more than one bar. We want to make sure we don't lose more than $40 when it comes into this, as, as it relates to this example we're using, and there's your move away. And so these 10 steps allow you to play the market the right way. You dramatically increase your odds of, sorry about that here, guys. You dramatically in increase your odds of see if I can get this off here. Having more winning trades than not. Okay. Now let's keep going. Got a couple more minutes here. Step number seven, journal your trades. But and what do I mean? Document your trades. But you want to document in blocks of 20. See, a lot of traders make a mistake of going after every trade analyzing. Don't analyze your trades after every trade or every five trades or every three trades. That's not enough of a data set to see patterns. You need to journal your trades in sets of 20. So every 20 trades, we go back and we regroup. Every 20 trades, we go back and we regroup, all right? Not one by one, not go back to the drawing board and investigate after three trades, not enough data. We need 20 trades, collect a block of 20. Now let's sit down and review those 20 trades. Now, what are you gonna review? We need to get numbers from our blocks of 20 trades. What numbers do we need? We need these numbers. Here's an example of one of my traders. Look at the upper left-hand corner, 117 trades, gross P&L of 6,000, net P&L of almost 6,000. So cost is very small. I like that. Best trade Facebook, worst trade Square. Now look to the right side. Look at the trader's numbers. This is what we need from our block of 20s, of our 20 trades. Every 20 trades, you're going to get these numbers. All right? What's my batting average? All right, how many winning trades versus losing trades? This trader has about a 56 cent percent winning batting average, which means that almost six wins out of every 10 trades. All right, I'd like to see that number go up a little bit, maybe closer towards seven. If this trader moved that number closer towards seven, if he won a little more frequently, wow this $6,000 might become $15,000. Little incremental ed moves in these numbers create exponential results. The win-loss ratio, all right, batting average, win-loss ratio, how much does the trader lose on average, win on average versus how much does the trader lose on average? Now, this is an excellent win-loss ratio, but what if this trader could move that up to 1.7, which means that the trader is earning basically 70% more on the winning side than all losing side trades. So look at the average loss of 105, but look at the winning loss. So it's 70% higher almost, right? All right, so the winning trades, the average winning trade is 172, the average losing trade is 105. So if we round that, average winning trade 170, average losing trade 100, if that trader could get that a little bit better, wow, it would be exponential. But more than the average win versus the average loss, more than the win-loss ratio, the batting average needs to rise. If you don't know your numbers, traders, every 20 trades, then how do you know what to work on? How do you know what to improve? Most traders don't know what to work on. Most traders don't know what to improve. You know what they do? They wake up every single Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. You know what? They just pray and hope today is different from yesterday. They have no plan. They don't work on anything. Now I've got just a couple more to go with you here. I'm gonna breeze through, through this really fast. Here, what if you looked at yourself like a chart? I make my traders look at themselves like a chart. This is the same trader's progress from June through August, all right? Notice the rising trend. Notice the, the very small number of losing days. This is how you wanna do it. This is looking at yourself by symbol. So when you take your block of 20 trades, break them down, traders. Break them down 
find your 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 batting average find what your win loss ratio is which symbols are you doing the best in which symbols are you doing the worst in if you don't know this you don't know yourself and a trader who doesn't know themselves know himself can't become an improved trader all right which is your best day this trader's worst day is Mar is 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 this is in spanish but this trader's worst day is tuesday but his best day is thursday How you need to know this. Where do you tend to make the, the, the vast majority of your mistakes? And step nine, have a goal each Monday. So when you do, when you finish your block of 20 trades and you get your numbers, then go into that following Monday with a goal. If you need to increase your winning trades, focus on that starting Monday. If you need to increase the, the, the amount of wins that you need to win more per trade than you lose, focus on holding your winning plays longer. How can you improve week by week, month by month, and become the master that you want to have, want to become if you do not do it systematically like this with a plan? Now, last step, I'm done. Step number 10, do not trade with your own capital or do not trade with capital that you need to, that you need capital that's very important to you. Now, listen, I know you're trying to do this to make capital, but in the beginning, you're going to lose first. It's just the way it is. It's the way everything else in life happens, guys. You start off playing soccer terribly. You start off playing chess terribly. You start off as a terrible golfer. You start off bad first. Don't risk your own capitals, capital in the beginning. I give my traders all the capital that they need to trade, especially in the beginning of their careers. I don't want them under the pressure of using their own capital. Guys, if you're interested in any one of our programs here, look, programs are normally 1,700 to 3,000, 1,400 to 1,900, and over the next 72 hours, guys, I will fund you for life. I will train you every single day of your life. We will do this professionally. We will do it methodically. We will do it the right way. And you'll do it without ever risking a single penny of your family's money the right way. No professional uses their own capital. 10 steps to instantly improve your trading. Thank you very much, traders.